as investors, when we are wrong about a stock, we have to come in here and admit that. And I can safely admit that I was wrong about Enphase Energy, ticker symbol ENPH. They reported their third quarter results and they were an absolute disaster. Shares are down nearly 20% in the after hours. We'll come in here, take a look at the financial results for the third quarter. Take a look at the fourth quarter outlook and spoiler alert, this is absolutely atrocious. Come in here, take a look at the income statement, balance sheet and cash flows over at Enphase. And as always, take a look into the technicals. This one is in absolute free fall mode. And for good reason, we'll take a look into where the shares are likely headed in the near future. As always, if you are new to the channel and find this type of content valuable, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below. It would mean a lot. Shares of Enphase Energy are down nearly 63% over the past one year and are down the same amount over the past year to date. And that is still not holding shares any higher as they are down another nearly 20% in the after hours, now trading below $80 a share, close to $79 a share. And so tomorrow, this year-to-date decline will be closer likely to 70 75 percent and that is absolutely staggering now there is good reason for that and we'll come in here and take a look at the results so revenues coming in at 550 million estimates over on wall street were a bit higher closer to 566 million so that is red flag number one is that the revenues did miss by close to 15 million dollars now last quarter in q2 Enphase did lower their q3 expectations for revenue in the range of 550 to 600 million. And so in terms of Enphase's own expectations, they came in near the very low end of that at just 555 million. And so right there, that is a second red flag that Enphase coming in near the bottom end of their Q3 guidance at 550 million. Now gap gross margins also coming at 47.5%. That is a bit higher than the quarter ago, but that is inclusive of a tax benefit, so not organic growth on their gross margins. And then non-GAAP EPS coming in at a dollar and two cents. Again, estimates on Wall Street were closer to a dollar, so a small beat on that EPS side. You see a year ago, EPS was closer to a dollar 25 cents, so a big decline year over year on that EPS side. Now, the big reason why the shares are selling off close to 20% in the after hours, right now I'm seeing 16% decline in the after hours is because Revenue guidance for this upcoming Q4 is coming in the range of 300 to 350 million dollars. That is a big, big miss on that revenue side. We come down, take a look at Wall Street estimates. They were closer to 570 million dollars. Guys, this is a nearly 250 million dollar miss on that top line revenues. That is close to being cut in half. That is a big, big red flag and a huge miss over at Enphase and something I think management could have telegraphed better. I'm sure they saw Solar Edge pre-announce their results last week, and I think Enphase Energy could have done the same thing in order to soften the blow, considering how low the revenue guidance for this upcoming Q4 is coming in, and especially if they, again, come near the lower end of this range. This is what they did in this current Q3, and so if, again, they come in near $300 million, yeah, that would be a huge miss. You see Q4 of last year, they were closer to 700 million 24 million dollars so more than a decline in 50 percent on their top line revenues again eps last year was closer to a dollar 51 cents on the q4 now estimates are closer to a dollar 10 cents but again those were based on revenues nearly 250 million dollars higher and so i'm guessing eps for this upcoming q4 can come somewhere in between 50 cents 60 cents maybe even lower than 50 cents and so the true pe and the true growth rates are likely going to turn negative for this fiscal year and the true PE is likely much much higher than a 19 times now the stock is declining close to 20 percent in the after hours and so maybe the true PE for this year really could be somewhere close to 24 25 times but again for a stock that cut its fourth quarter revenues by so much again they'll likely have to bring in revenue estimates over at q1 q2 of next year and all these estimates will have to be revised back down and that's after Analysts have been revising down estimates over the last month. As you see, 93% revision downwards have happened over the last month over at Enphase. And so you see revenues in the U.S. were down nearly 16% quarter over quarter. Guys, this is not a decline of 16% year over year. This is quarter over quarter. And the revenues over in Europe decreased approximately 34% due to high inventory at their distribution partners, along with a softening demand in the key markets being Netherlands, 
France and Germany and Look Solar Edge said these results last week when they shared that they expect the Europe market to come in softer than expected. Again, I think management over at Enphase could have telegraphed this a bit better. And to make matters worse, non-GAAP gross margins declined quarter over quarter on a true organic basis. They were increased due to a tax benefit and operating expenses in this Q3 were nearly a million dollars higher than Q4, even though revenues were down substantially from a quarter ago. And to top all of that, Yes, management did repurchase nearly $110 million worth of common stock in this most recent quarter at an average price of $129 per share. Guys, the stock is trading at lower than $80 per share in the after hours. What is management over at Enphase doing? Considering, look, if investors make the mistake of buying shares of Enphase at $129 per share, that is one thing. The fact that management could see revenues in this Q3 coming in the lower range of the guidance, considering management could see weakness in the European markets and could probably forecast that Q4 revenues will be substantially, substantially lower. Yeah, what is management over at Enphase doing? Buying back their stock at nearly $130 per share. I'm sure they have to have a better outlook on supply and demand, and I'm sure Enphase could have done a better, again, could have done a much better job at telegraphing this to investors now revenue is coming in at 551 million quarter over quarter you see that is a big decline this is the q2 in the middle column here that is a big decline quarter over quarter and year over year again a big decline now the cost of revenues also came down subsequently in this most recent quarter at just 289 million dollars and so your gross profit actually didn't decline as bad as you would think considering revenues were down by roughly a hundred million dollars year over year the gross profits were only down by nearly five million dollars again it's not the third quarter that's more shocking to investors it's the guidance for this upcoming q4 coming in nearly 300 to 350 million dollars per share how much more can enphase cut down their cost of revenues and so that is the real concern over at enphase is if they post another quarter of nearly 300 million dollars their gross profit would absolutely shrivel up and that is what's scary over at Enphase. And considering the fact that we don't know how long this weakness in demand will really last, yeah, this could go on for a few quarters down the road, especially while interest rates remain high, even in Europe. Yeah, the demand for high purchase ticket items such as solar panels will likely remain weak in the near future. Now you see R&D ticked up by nearly $10 million year over year, up to $54.8 million. They did do a decent job controlling costs on sales and marketing and GNA. But again, you likely don't have to do that much sales and marketing considering how much inventory you have to still push through over at Enphase. And so your total operating expenses rose by nearly $12 million year over year and your income from operations coming in at $118 million. Same time last year, we were at $135 million. So your net income for this most recent quarter coming in at close to $114 billion. That was roughly flat year over year and diluted EPS coming in at 80 cents a year ago, we were also at 80 cents. So again, the bullish case over at Enphase was its valuation. Its valuation on paper looks very cheap at just 19 times. But when you really come down to it for a company that's declining revenues in the US by 16%, declining revenues in Europe by 34%, and is expected to decline revenues in the subsequent Q4 by a lot, and then is posting flat to negative growth, on that EPS side, yeah, this stock shouldn't, in fact, deserve a high premium valuation at all. And so if the stock is trading at a true 25 times forward multiple, yeah, that is likely still a bit too high considering the growth rates over at Enphase have absolutely gone negative. Now on their shares outstanding, this is coming down on a diluted basis. You see last year we were at 145 million shares outstanding. Now we're at 143 on a basic shares outstanding this is still going up and we'll see why that is likely the um, absurd amount of stock-based compensation and phase hands out is causing basic shares outstanding to still increase considering they still are doing a ton of share buybacks now the one bright spot over at end phase still is their balance sheet it's easy to say the balance sheet over at end phase is still very very strong you see they have cash and cash equivalents at nearly 290 million dollars and then marketable securities at really $1.5 billion. And so overall, close to $1.7, $1.8 billion in cash and cash equivalents. You see, this is a market cap of nearly $12.8 billion in the after hours. It's likely near $10 billion. And so for a $10 billion company to have close to 
billion dollars in cash and cash equivalents still a significant amount of cash you see total current assets at 2.6 billion dollars they have total liabilities at 2.5 billion dollars and so current assets over total liabilities that's a good thing to see they don't have a ton of short-term debt nearly a hundred million dollars worth of short-term debt and then close to 1.2 billion dollars worth of long-term debt so again the balance sheet over at Enphase still looking fairly strong they do have Ash over at the company to sustain an economic downturn of this magnitude for at least another few quarters. But again, if this continues throughout 2024 into the first half of 2025, yeah, this balance sheet will also take a hit. And so at that point, really everything will start to look ugly over at end phase. Right now, the balance sheet is still still looking quite strong and holding this company up. Now, moving on to the statement of cash flows, we bring down that 113, close to $114 million in net income. We add some depreciation, amortization, but the big thing that we really add is this line item of stock-based compensation. We add nearly $44 billion worth of stock-based compensation, not in nine months, not in 12 months, in three months. In this most recent quarter, Enphase paid out nearly $44 billion worth of stock-based compensation. A year ago, they had paid out nearly $53 billion in stock-based compensation. And so for a stock that is down over 63%, now close to 70, 75% over the past one year, the fact that stock-based compensation has really not come down by that amount is absolutely staggering. The amount of stock-based compensation Enphase is really handing out is actually absurd. And if you really think about it, look, employees over at Enphase won't work for free. And so they're either gonna be paid in cash or be paid in stock. And right now, a lot of them are being paid in stock and considering the stock is in free fall, I'm sure a lot of them would rather be paid in cash. And again, if they start getting paid in cash, the balance sheet over at Enphase doesn't look that good anymore. And so keep that in mind is the amount of stock-based compensation Enphase is handing out is actually a very important figure considering their net income is at $114 million for the three months. And then they're handing out nearly a third of that in stock-based compensation. Yeah, you get to add that back. And so your cash flows look yeah, a lot better than they really should be, close to $145 million per share. Again, that's still down from a year ago where we were closer to $188 million per share. Now Enphase does have to spend a decent amount on the purchase of property and equipment. They spent nearly $24 billion in the most recent quarter. That is, again, a big slowdown from a quarter ago, which is good to see Enphase at least slowing down the purchase of their property and equipment, likely due to how much inventory backlog they still have over in Europe and the US. Now you do see they have purchased close to $110 million worth of common stock in this most recent quarter. Usually I'm a big fan of repurchasing common stock. I'm a big fan of share buybacks because that is you, for you, the investor, you get a bigger portion of the earnings. But considering how poor their guidance is, considering management really should have known that this most recent quarter will come in ugly at $550 million of revenue and the subsequent Q4 will really come in ugly and the street will not like those results. Management really should have seen that coming. And so even purchasing this much common stock at a much, much higher price, I don't know if that is the best use of their cash over at Enphase. All things considered, they did add close to $11.4 billion onto their cash pile in this most recent quarter. Moving on to the technicals for Enphase, and this is an absolutely ugly, ugly chart pattern. You see posting a fake red candle here I've drawn in to represent where the shares are in the after hours, close to $79, down nearly 17.5%. This big gap downwards was a gap of close to 20%, nearly 15%. That was when Solar Edge reported their earnings, pre-announced their earnings last week. And so Enphase took a big dump on that and now taking nearly a 17% dive on their own results. You pull this chart back a year and this one has been an absolute downtrending channel and to no surprise, it has broken through that and likely will make another downtrending channel even lower down over here. And so not surprisingly, investors are fleeing the stock after the horrible, horrible forward looking guidance. It seemed like Enphase was coming in here and making a bottoming pattern near this $115, $120 support level. But I think no one really expected future earnings and revenues to come in this light. No one really expected the revenues over in Europe to be this bad considering when solar edge pre-announced their results that is really when the market took a turn for enphase considering the demand for solar panels and my, these micro inverters are basically non-existent at the current moment and likely 
will be for the next little while. Now, where I see Enphase stock coming down after these levels is really, I see it coming near $59 per share. I think this is the natural next stop for Enphase shares. This is a support from back in 2020. Yeah, you have to go all the way back to 2020. Considering Enphase has broken this downtrending channel, it has been basically in free fall. There's not a whole lot of price action holding it. I think it does have a level of support briefly at $77 per share, which is where it is in the after hours. But again, I think investors over the next few days will digest it. I think the algorithms will come in here and absolutely continue to sell shares of Enphase. I do think it is a very real possibility. It comes down to $58, $59 per share. At that point, again, Enphase's valuation could say is cheap, but it's really hard to predict the true valuation for a stock like this, considering they're slashing forward revenues by nearly 50%. Yeah, it's it's likely the stock like this will stay in this downtrending channel for a long, long time, really until interest rates come down and the appetite for big ticket purchases like solar panels once again is looking bright for Enphase. I think until then, this stock will absolutely continue to slide close to $59, $60 per share. We'll see revenue estimates and earnings estimates come in over the subsequent few weeks and then this real price to earnings and price to sales multiples will all get updated likely significantly higher closer to 25 maybe even 30 times in my opinion for this upcoming fiscal 2023 and so for that case i think i can safely say i was wrong on end phase when i did call possibly a bottom near 120 dollars per share but again, that's the reason why I mentioned in my previous videos, you go back and take a look at my previous videos of Enphase. While I was saying it might be a good entry point to come in here, you don't, you absolutely do not unload a full position into a stock like Enphase all at once at these levels, considering how volatile a name like this really is, considering it can make big downward swings. Yeah, you don't come in here and you unload a full position. If you are bullish on Enphase at this point, based on their current valuation, maybe you nibble on one or two shares and then suddenly when the news turns ugly when Enphase cuts their guidance when Enphase's valuation suddenly changes and their fundamentals have truly changed at this point yeah that is when you cut your losses in your few shares and you exit the position in Enphase and you frankly take the loss if you had picked up shares of Enphase at this point I think based on the true valuation that is really unknown and the fundamentals over at Enphase have absolutely deteriorated and for that reason, I think I can't come in here and pick up shares of Enphase, even though the valuation might look cheap on the surface. I think shares are no doubt headed to $60 per share and then possibly lower at $40 per share. That was my take on Enphase Energy. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are on this stock in the comments below. Shares are cratering nearly 17%, close to $80 a share. Stay tuned for more earnings on the channel. As always, thanks so much for listening and I'll catch you guys in the next video.